wanted to talk about were already said, <laughs> but I think I can elaborate a little on some of the topics. And uh, Sven already said a lot of the things I want to say because, uh, as you see, my the title of the talk is more or less "What can we learn from games?" <laughs> and he already talked about that a little. Uh, the short answer is perhaps more or less everything, <laughs> but uh, I will do it a little more in detail. Um, um, just for, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering that uh, nobody asked from the talkers before, but I would like to have a feeling of the audience. So uh, just uh, perhaps raise, raise your hands if you are coming from the, more from the film industry, from the film side. Okay, who is coming from the games industry? Oh, at least five. <laughs> Uh, okay, so me, my, myself, um, yeah, <laughs> there is, uh, oh no, what's happening? As always, Prezi problems. Prezi is great, but uh, <laughs> that's always like this. Um, yeah, for me, it's just a short overview. I'm coming more or less from both. I uh, have some film background, uh, studied film drama dramaturgy here in uh, Berlin, and then immediately after I changed to making games, then I uh, had this idea of uh, not, not only making narrative games, but also uh, I, I worked as a system designer for us some time. And then, as you see, I started to combine both. So I'm now a little as a working as a narrative designer uh, with background in more or less both media and uh, uh, try to, to, yeah, try to tell, uh, um, important things to people who are developing projects uh, a bit more or less successful. And now I, uh, I have a little academic career in since the last few years also. Um, yeah, I mean, we are talking here about VR and what I want to say now is very obvious, but uh, um, perhaps uh, I, I need it for my, uh, for my line of <laughs> talking. Uh, yeah, that's uh, VR is just great, just awesome. Uh, if you're looking at the Google Trends uh, uh, thing, uh, uh, if you Google the, the t terms virtual reality, then you immediately get this one, which is very n nicely visible that with the beginning of the, the F is where uh, Facebook bought Oculus. Um, and then after it, it just went up, as you see, so it's a very hyped thing. <laughs> Everybody said it before. But uh, if you compare that to this uh, so-called Gartner hype cycle, I don't know who knows it, <laughs> then you see that uh, there we have some kind of a problem. <laughs> VR is very much hyped, but it's stuck in this uh, valley of, uh, what was it called? Uh, throw of disillusionment. Um, and it's stuck there since a few years, yeah? So it's, uh, and so, so you have to ask yourself, why the hell is this happening? Why, why is it there? Uh, and I think the main reason for that is more or less that, uh, that virtual reality as we have it now with this hype <laughs> uh, also reminded us that we have in a way more senses than the five we are always talking about. <laughs> uh, we had this topic today already, uh, um, so I don't want to talk about that too, too much, but I, I really find it interesting that a lot of people were wondering uh, uh, with VR that uh, it makes people sick, that it, uh, it, 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 it's uh, strange to move around uh, with a controller and look around with your head. It's a strange situation, yeah? And uh, it has to do, I think, with this, this problem that the VR evolution we are no having now just, uh, just works with your with your with the visual yeah it's it's it's, it's more or less a, it's a huge leap forward yes it is <laughs> but it's also also 
sorry, only with one of your senses or two, maybe, if I add sounds to it. Of course, there are a lot of things um, in, in other areas, but uh, yeah, th th I think that's the, that's the huge uh, leap forward. Um, so real VR, we had it already today, would be something like this, yeah, where, where I, 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 I can talk to all of the senses of somebody, but we don't have this, uh, no, of course we don't have this. So I, 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 th I find it very strange to look at all these new devices, and I like to look at all these new devices, but you have also to, to look at them in sense of with which senses are they working, yeah? <laughs> what are they really doing? Is it all VR or they are completely different devices in a sense? It's not like they are all one, it's not all, everything, everything is called VR but they are completely different things. Uh, the one we have here on the, uh, on the left side is like, uh, yeah, it's, it's only looking around, <laughs> more or less, uh, without every other uh, uh, sensory uh, uh, inclusion. Um, and on the other half, we have this, this um, picture of, of, of the wolf uh, things where they are trying to make some kind of a commercial version of, of, of head tracking uh, addition and, and, and input uh, improvements, etc., etc. So they are completely different if you have to work with them. Um, coming from the games background, I find it very interesting if everybody is talking about virtual reality and you have this word there, reality. <laughs> And uh, there is one book I would like to recommend you to all. I think that's one of the best books on interactive storytelling in, gen in a general way. Uh, it's from Jasper Jewell, uh, you see it. Um, and there he talks about that uh, games and uh, uh, interactive media in, uh, as a whole is uh, always half real. On the one side, it's always real because I'm interacting real. <laughs> I'm interacting with the rules of the game, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things and if I get frustrated then I, I get frustrated and not the, 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 the guy I see on the screen. So it's a real thing interacting with something what is interactive. Yeah? <laughs> and on the other side I have this kind of, yeah, it's, it's only half real uh, as Jasper Jew said because it's also fictional because I also look at the things which somebody made up. Yeah? So, so, so interactive projects, all of them are per definition always uh, uh, virtual reality in a way, because as long as virtual reality is not real real, <laughs> uh, uh, for me games are uh, uh, in, 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 in that area too. You have these two things um, um, which uh, Jasper Jewell is talking about, that on the one side you have this perception thing, but you know already from, from watching uh, movies, and on the other side you have this experience which you have to design also. So I think really the main thing is if you have an interactive media, you have to design the experience of the, of the, of, of the user, of the player, whatever you call them. Uh, somebody said before that uh, um, uh, VR is also an interactive uh, uh, experience. Uh, I would let away the also, and then yes, then it's right. Uh, VR is an interactive experience per se. If in the moment I can look around, um, uh, I, I'm interactive, and then I have to think about in what kind of uh, role, in what kind of situation I put the the, uh, the the player, the user who is looking around, and I have to give them a reason to look around. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, and play with them. Uh, so just thinking about the narrative design of, of VR, what is the, what, what is the role I'm, 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 I'm putting the player in, um, just, just from the design perspective of the thing, yeah? uh, as we have it today now with the commercial things. Yeah? I just want to talk about them uh, uh, now. Uh, we very much have this thing, uh, everybody talked about it already, presents, uh, you are watching something, you are, yeah, you are looking around, you are discovering things, uh, you have this kind of strange experimental movements because you can't really move with these devices now. So always it's like a strange thing, yeah, you have this uh, either this kind of controller situation or you can walk around a few steps but you can't really walk around a lot, <laughs> so if you are in a I, I don't know, in a dessert situation, and <laughs> it's n n not very good with a wolf thing to walk around in a dessert. 
uh, and you have this kind of a passive driving situation where some something is driving you around. <laughs> it's also, I think, a strange thing. Um, uh, I have. Well, I, I, I just wanted to say because a lot of people were talking about a lot of examples, and I don't want to show you my examples, so I, uh, <laughs> I just get to the to the second one, um, to the to the next slide. Um, here we have this kind of. Um, uh, sorry, I have, I have to find my point again. Um, I mean, uh, there is this this kind of an active viewer situation with with uh, with, with every VR device we have now. Yeah? You have to put the, 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 the user in the situation of an active viewer. And this active viewer thing is not nothing new. Yeah? That's, that's, uh, even in the film theory you can find this uh, active viewer uh, 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 theories about some, somebody putting together clues, uh, 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 looking around, uh, making, up, make, making sense of what he's just seeing. Uh, but if you look at games, then games are doing this since a lot of years, <laughs> and there are uh, elaborated ideas and theories about how to tell stories inside of such an uh, interactive environment where you can more or less just look around. <laughs> and this is called uh, um, environmental storytelling, and it is, it is just like looking at things and, 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 and seeing them. I just want to show you one example because I think that's something uh, uh, nobody uh, uh, had before. Uh, and it's an a intro video of one of the most famous games uh, from the last 10 years. It's, like, it's, it's, it's called Half-Life and it's the opening sequence of Half-Life, which in my eyes is completely the same thing that uh, a lot of people are trying now with VR. Uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry. Do you see something? Not really. Uh, I try it like this. Uh, you are inside of a ve vehicle <laughs> and uh, it's uh, automatically going from point A to point B and uh, you can look around. <laughs> so that's not a huge difference <laughs> to a lot of VR projects we have today. Um, and the other project which I have here on the side of is uh, something I, I don't want to, to uh, advertise for the project because I find it very problematic in a way, but uh, the opening sequence is also completely the same. Yeah? The, last, the, the first 10 minutes of the game are an interaction as we see it always in VR today. Yeah? You are in a passive role of uh, um, somebody, sorry, of somebody who is sitting in a car and driving around and, and, and uh, somebody drives him around uh, in a war situation. Uh, so I don't see a huge difference here also. Uh, so yeah, what are you doing? You are more or less in this viewing situation. What, what, is, your, what is the narrative situation then? It's like putting together mental cognitive models of what you are say, uh, seeing. Yeah? You get clue A and then you get clue B and then you combine them together to something which is, uh, yeah, which you think was the background story of uh, what you just saw or whatever. So we are just, and this is uh, more or less uh, one of the main things I would like to say is that you are in the moment of that you put somebody in the role of viewing around somewhere, you, you put them him in a role in a, uh, where he has to do some kind of research work, where he, where he is doing some kind of journalistic work because he is looking around, picking up information, putting them together, etc., etc. Uh, so I really think that this is something uh, which is sometimes is not really seen that you you are yeah you 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 put the player in the role. Of, uh, of somebody who researches something. So, so in my eyes, this has some very much to do so, uh, with, uh, with, with journalism. But you always have to think also about, oh, that's one example I would like to let them away too. I have my slides online already. I tweeted it so you can just see the, um, the examples. Uh, so if, uh, of, of two story situation, yeah? you, are, you have the story which you see, 
which you which yeah uh, the divorce situation I'm I'm watching, <laughs> and on the other hand I am in the role of somebody who is experiencing that yeah. So these are two different stories I I'm telling in the same time, and I really have to think that uh, a lot of VR projects which I say uh, see today is they are only working on the one area of this yeah if, if people are coming from the film industry of course then they try to to show me something but they don't think about what i'm doing to see it yeah and if you if you you can really learn from games it's just like how do i how do i have to put the player in the situation that he has that 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 he he looks around yeah because uh, the easiest way if if, if i'm not I don't know how to say it, but uh, um, politely, I don't know how to say it politely. <laughs> but uh, the thing is really that, uh, yeah, what is the situation you are putting the player, the, the user into? Yeah, but what are his goals? He has to give them a goal to look around. It, it sounds stupid, but you have to give them a goal. And a lot of games are doing exactly this. Yeah, they are beginning with, uh, I don't know, what happened here? Yeah, this is the main question, more or less, uh, a lot of times that you have to research what happened there, but then you have to give me clues, you have to give me the big, the big question. Yeah, you know, Somebody died there, and then I'm interested in, in researching why he died there or whatever. Uh, yeah, so you, you have this two so story situation, which, and this is also coming from the, from the game theory, is you always have this in 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 in, in uh, the moment you have an interactive uh, media uh, in the moment you have these two things you have the the media itself you have the the piece of whatever you are watching it and on the other hand you have this this experience the play experience yeah you have the the fun side which i have to shape so as a game designer it's always very hard to what I would like to achieve is more or less always the play thing. Yeah, I would like to have you fun, <laughs> but uh, what I can shape on the other side is only the the other thing. Yeah, I I, I can only design the the thing <laughs> and just hope that you have uh, some kind of fun with that. <laughs> um, so if you if you look at the projects, and I am very sorry that I don't uh, show them to you, but I think. Uh, uh, Perhaps I can, I can in the end uh, s uh, zoom in into some. But if you look at every VR project, and not only the projects themselves, but also to every device itself, then you can, you can really see it be um, between these two axes in a way. And it's not like film versus games, or it's not a versus situation. But it's like, it's like, do you have a more or less passive experience where you only look around? <laughs> Or do you have interactive layers on that, on that, on that, uh, adding to that? Yeah, I think the the easiest thing that we have now with VR is just really what Google uh, Cardboard is doing, just really looking around, nothing else. And you can add to that. Yeah, you can add the head movements to that. You can add the body body movements to that. You can add the interacting. Uh, uh, um, possibilities to that, that I, I can interact with objects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you are looking at VR projects or games, they are more or less doing, they are s somewhere in between, yeah? And, uh, and I also think that if you're doing a VR project, um, uh, that, that, that's, yeah, eh, eh, the, the, the uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, what I'm also wondering is if, if uh, it's, it's very interesting seeing that uh, from both sides, also from the games and from the film industry, uh, there are a lot of people who are not really accepting this, <laughs> that it, we are talking about the same medium. <laughs> yeah, that that, that, uh, that uh, uh, coming from the games industry, there is a lot of talking about are this kind of games as I just showed it to you, and they are games, they are called Call of Duty, <laughs> Uh, or are they really games experiences? Is it enough for a game to look around? Yeah, uh, there are this buzzword now uh, going around called walking simulations, where you more or less are walking around and looking around. That's everything you do. <laughs> and there is a lot of people in the uh, games industry who are asking, is it a game? Yeah. But on the other side, we have the people coming from the film industry who are seeing the interactive experiences in a way, and they are asking the same questions from the other side. Is it, uh, yeah, is it still a film? Is it still a narration? Is it still a storytelling piece? Uh, 
I, I don't really see that uh, that uh, difference between between the bone. I have to admit uh, that project we are shown already. So if you uh, no, sorry, I just uh, want to skip that too. Skip that too, and come slowly to a conclusion. So if you, if you compare this situation with, this, with, 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 with all this hype cycle, then I really think that you, you have to learn to design not for your wish and your dream of virtual reality, but for the actual device you are work for. Yeah? So th th that sounds a little strange, but a lot of times I, 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 uh, there are a lot of people who are uh, would like to do strange virtual reality stuff with Google Cardboards, yeah? And it's not working so good because Google Card Cardboard devices are only working with this visual thing, yeah? You can't walk around and then they get frustrated and then they just go away. Uh, so I really think you, you don't have to, to design for what you wish for a virtual reality is, but you have to design for what you yeah, what you have in front of you for that device. And you have to think about in what kind of uh, situation does this device, this concrete device, uh, put the, the, the people, the, the player, the user in? What, what is the, the situation he will be inside if he's playing with this uh, thing? Uh, so, and this is more or less the, the, the end of the talk. Uh, uh, I have to admit, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, decision to call this conference VR conference beyond games, but I have a problem with the word beyond there, <laughs> obviously, because I don't think that, uh, that there is a difference. <laughs> I, I really think that VR is something uh, what is very similar to a game. <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, it's not something very similar, it is a game. Or, or, or a game is a virtual reality experience on the other side, as I said before, so I don't see a, 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 don't see a difference there. So I really think that uh, if you are working on some VR projects, you should immediately contact some game designers <laughs> who can help you very effectively <laughs> about how to do some stuffs and how to, to avoid huge mistakes which uh, I see every day uh, if I look at projects. Uh, yeah, so that's more or less what I wanted to say. Thank you.